Welcome to Cytoskeleton Inc.'s video demonstrating GTPase GLISA activation assays. GTPases are low molecular weight small G proteins that act as molecular switches to regulate many cellular functions. GTPases are active when bound to GTP and inactive when bound to GDP. GLISAs measure the active levels of GTPases in tissue and cell lysates. Producing active lysates is an important aspect of preparing for the GLISA assays. This diagram demonstrates the principle of the GLISA assay. Tissue or cell lysates containing small g proteins bound to either GDP or GTP are pipetted into the wells. These wells are pre-coated with a protein that captures only the active form of the targeted small g protein, those bound to GTP. The GDP bound small g protein is removed by washing, followed by incubation with antigen presenting buffer. Then the bound active form of a small g protein is detected by sequential incubation of an anti-small g protein primary antibody followed by an HRP conjugated secondary antibody. The HRP bound secondary antibody is detected by either measuring absorbance or luminescence associated with an HRP substrate added to each well. The remainder of this video will describe how to perform GLISA activation assays. GLISA kits have all the reagents needed to carry out the activity assays. Researchers only need to provide lysates, PBS, and concentrated sulfuric acid. Equipment needs are tissue culture supplies, liquid nitrogen, room temperature and cold room orbital plate shakers with a 200 to 400 RPM capability, vortex, and a spectrophotometer capable of reading at 600 and 490 nanometers, or a luminometer if a luminescence kit is purchased. First, set up assay positive and negative controls as described in the manual. Manuals are available at cytoskeleton.com. Next, determine the number of wells needed for the experiment. We recommend duplicate wells per condition. Bring the bag containing the well strips to room temperature before opening and then remove the number of well strips needed as quickly as possible. Reseal the remainder of strips in the bag containing desiccant. Place the wells in the strip holder and then place on ice. Keep the wells in the strip holder on ice while adding ice cold water to each well to dissolve the protective white powder. Water should be left on for at least two minutes. After adding water to the wells on ice, remove lysates from the freezer and thaw rapidly in a room temperature water bath for one minute. Each GLISA well requires 25 to 50 microliters of lysate, using a recommended lysate concentration between 0.3 to 1 milligram per milliliter, depending upon the small g protein being assayed. Specific recommendations can be found in the kit manual. Place the thawed lysate on ice and use immediately. Lysate should be thawed only after adding water to the wells to dissolve the protective coating. If necessary, add ice-cold lysis buffer to equalize protein concentrations between the various lysate aliquots. If indicated to do so in the manual, mix an equal volume of cold binding buffer with each lysate aliquot. Mix with a 3 to 5 second vortex and return to ice. Remove the water from the wells with a vigorous flick into a waste container followed by a series of five to seven hard pats on a paper towel. Immediately return the plate to ice and add the indicated volumes of positive control, lysis buffer blank, and experimental lysates. Place wells on a flat orbital plate shaker at four degrees Celsius for 30 minutes at 400 RPMs. This incubation must be done at four degrees Celsius. 400 RPMs is the optimal speed. 200 RPMs can be used, but results in 50% signal loss. After the 30 minute incubation, remove the plate from the shaker and wash the wells twice with room temperature wash buffer. Immediately add the antigen presenting buffer and incubate at room temperature for 2 minutes. These steps must be performed quickly to retain the most signal. Wash wells 3 times in room temperature wash buffer. Now add diluted primary antibody and incubate for 45 minutes on a room temperature plate shaker. This is followed by three more washes with room temperature wash buffer, followed by addition of an HRP conjugated secondary antibody. Consult the manual for antibody dilutions. Right before the secondary antibody incubation is complete, mix equal volumes of HRP detection reagents A and B, 25 microliters for the luminescence or 50 microliters for the absorbance version of each reagent is required per well. 
After three more washes following the secondary antibody incubation, add the HRP detection reagent and incubate for 10 to 15 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. Then add the HRP stop solution, confirming that the wells are free of bubbles and removing them if present. For the absorbent space kits, there will be a color change. For the luminescent space kits, the solution is clear, with light emissions between 400 to 500 nanometers. For a color metric based GLISA, measure absorbance at 490 nanometers. For a luminescence based GLISA, use a luminometer to measure luminescence. For the best linear range of detection, the positive control reading should be approximately three times buffer blank value. It should be noted that luminescence readings can vary widely depending on the machine type used. With the OD or luminescence data, graphs can be made in Excel to depict the effects of treatments, concentration responses, or time courses. If you need a plotting template file, please contact technical support at tservice at cytoskeleton.com. This concludes Cytoskeleton's GLISA instructional video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact us at tservice at cytoskeleton.com.